welcome to another episode of the 72 Pink Connector Podcast. With us this week, we have Adam. Hello. And Josh. Hi. So, um, go ahead and call it out. Tom is missing. Yes, he is. He is, he is very much missing. He's AFK. Rest in peace, Tom. We have him here in spirit. <laughs> I love Nintendo. But we don't have Tom. So true. Um, <clears throat> how's you guys this week? This week, so far so good, man. Pretty long, longer week than I've had before. Well, not before recently. Had a lot of time off, so I, <laughs> it was oh. like it was like That's three day nice. three day week, four day week, and then right into like an actual six day week or five day week. So not so bad. Yeah, that, that's always the worst. You love having time off, but when you come back, it makes the normal grind feel like a long extra. It's like, oh. Yeah, it does. It really does. <laughs> this is terrible. Yeah. It's like yeah, back in Ohio, sure. I used to work a lot of like 10 hours and stuff. And now, you know, I've been out here for like a year. It's been like eight hours. And this last week is like 10, 10, 10 move shit. 10 is like, fuck. Damn. I'm not used to this anymore. That's rough. What about you, Adam? How's your week been? It's snowing. Snow? Yeah. Nice. Last, last week it was 60. Now it's snowing. Fuck snow, man. <laughs> Fuck snow. <laughs> what? Why? Why? Well, I understand I, why. I say <laughs> why? Because snow sucks. Snow, snow is cool snow if you don't live cool. in snow. <laughs> snow, snow, looks, snow, snow. Dealing with snow sucks. Yeah. I like snow because I've ne I don't experience snow on a regular basis. I love like, how I can leave. I love how quiet it gets when everything's covered in snow because it like absorbs all the sounds and stuff. It's like <laughs> got this weird kind of eerie quietness to it that I do like, and it looks cool, but it's also annoying and cold and it gets everywhere and it's in the way. <laughs> it's slippery and I don't particularly care for that. <laughs> Yeah, snow I'm, sounds snow sounds like an annoying cousin, or maybe like a niece or nephew, like an annoying niece or nephew. You're like, okay, great, like it's really cool to see you every once in a while, but when you get yeah. annoying, I can just. But then sometimes leave. they're like, hey, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna maybe make you wreck your car. Yeah, says the annoying <laughs> niece. I get that. I get that all the time. Yeah, and <laughs> it's worse in the <laughs> cities. <laughs> like yeah. in a city, oh, snow yeah. is worse. Like in the country. You have people well, that are that have lived there for a long time. The so city they roads also get treated too. The country roads do not. Yes, but my mm. big thing is in the country, those people have lived there. They've grown up with mm. it for the most mm. part. Mm. When you're in the city, you got transplants. They don't know how to drive with snow because they come from oh, Texas city, yeah. or yeah. something <laughs> like that, where they right, see an right. inch of snow and it's a fucking apocalypse. Hey, yeah. well, if you've ever driven in California, it's actually quite interesting, especially because we don't get any, uh, like, real harsh weather. So whenever it rains, like, most of California dies. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like on this particular road, the 680 road, like, um, right near my house, it's a, it's a freeway. Um, like, everything's fine. It's always congested, busy. It's, it's you know, it's um, the main road, or the main uh, yeah. highway river. Uh, as soon as like it starts drizzling, wrecks. There's like car wrecks yeah. all the way down. Like like you see like big <laughs> big semis like flipped over. He's like I saw like on the first rain like two three years ago. There was like there was a car like it just drizzled and there was a car upside down in the middle. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like what amateurs. Are you doing? <laughs> it's a straight road. It's not like yeah, it's not like crazy yeah. twist and turn. It's a straight line. I'm like, how are you guys doing this wrong? I don't understand. Did you guys, did you guys see the videos of the? I think it's what 405 is the big highway out there down by LA. Am I saying okay. that right? Is it 405? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, so. With all the wildfires, like yeah, wildfire. oh. right, right on the road though. Not well, not on yeah. the road, but it's like right there, right, right off to the side of the road. Mm -hmm. I saw this video of somebody driving in the passenger seat of a car. And they're like going 10 miles an hour and there's just fire everywhere. Yeah. Welcome to California land of fire. <laughs> <laughs> California yes. is now Mordor officially. Yeah. The whole Pacific Northwest is weird with that. I didn't expect it because, well, I understand California. I've always heard about that. I didn't realize that shit mm -hmm. happened in Washington too. Yeah. Did like, you guys have a lot of fires too? Oh yeah. Like the Adam and I couldn't go up to Rainier because of forest fires. Oh really? The, rem the remnants of forest fires. Yeah, it's it gets 
the whole Northwest gets pounded. Well, at least I know the Pacific Northwest up where I'm at gets pounded with, I shouldn't say pounded, it gets a lot of rain during the winter. But during the summer, you get nothing at yeah. all. So it goes from being like this rain every other day to nothing, and then everything burns. I heard uh, Southern California has three seasons. Summer, slightly less hot summer, and fire. <laughs> that That's sense. probably true. It rains every once in a while. It's like it's, uh, when I lived in uh, the San Diego area, like right by the beach, like it flooded one time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was really bad. And it was really crazy because it was really little. And you can go out and like swim in the roads. It's crazy. <laughs> nice. I'm just going to go swimming. Where are you going? Ah, right in the front yard. <laughs> it's like um, in Illinois, the world or the state record uh, channel cat, no, it was blue cat, was actually caught in a dude's backyard during flooding. Set the state record fishing in his backyard during high water. I was like, what? Anyway, that's awesome. So, Legendary. <laughs> that definitely got on a tangent on that. Um, you guys been doing much gaming this week? A little, gaming. not as much as I what's normally that? would. What's that? It, it's yeah, something what's that? I do what's, a little bit of. What's, what's a game? Explain Video it games? to us. Yeah, break it down. Um, like, just, like, they're, they're things that developers it. make and they sell you. And then after you start to enjoy it, they sell you more shit for it that you feel you need. So they keep making money. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's those things. And they have like all these lottery boxes in it. And the people that pay more money uh, do better in the game, right? Absolutely. And they look cool. Okay, yeah. Like, like a Battlefront. And if the game senses that you're not spending enough money, they'll pair you with people who are spending a lot of money so you can like relish in how <laughs> awesome they look. That's oh, really good. God. I like this. I wonder how much of that part is realistic. Um, like 50%. Blizzard has, or Activision has a patent on that in their matchmaking. Mm. Oh, yeah, true. we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I remember Adam, Tom, Tom getting very angry about that. Yeah, it's, well, it's really weird because he goes from saying how um, Blizzard has it right when it comes to loot boxes, but at the same time, a company they own has the patent of one of the most evil matchmaking schemes ever made. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. It'll be fine. They're just holding the patent so nobody else does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're protecting it. You know, it's just like yeah, protect, it's protecting gamers. You know, tr- trust Blizzard <laughs> to do the right thing with their patents, and trust Valve to always be in the best interest of their customers. Right? I mean, it's it's, it's safe, right? <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to get back down that way. And I'm the only one who ever <laughs> yeah. feels that way about Valve. Yeah. But anyway, Adam, you've been doing much. Yeah, yeah, I have. What you been doing? I played. Uh, let's start with Siege because this is a common one. Yes, and uh, we've been playing this a lot lately. Hold on. And we have been getting destroyed lately. <laughs> Did you, you guys get through that first fun, that first fun arc that is an incompetitive? Like a competitive um, game always has that, that first arc where you have like no, like zero MMR. So like you have a chance. Fun. Yeah. yeah and, and like, you're like, look at the cool thing I did. Look at the cool guy I killed. Like, <laughs> and then I think the biggest issue is there's a group of people we've been playing with that are way better than us. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when we match make with them, we're facing people who are on average way better than us like there's some clips i want to make of toasty yeah this dude is a pistol god he will, i think you were playing with us one time when he was doing this josh like he'll just run around with the revolver and like bam 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 bitches die yeah his his yeah. crosshair placement is absurd like yeah <laughs> it's just there really are, good there are, there are people that like rainbow siege and then there are rainbow six siege players and those okay. players are not human. Yes. Those players yeah. are something else entirely. But part of the other issue um, that recently is there's been new operators released. Mm-hmm. If you had the season two pass, you're able to play them right now. And I think next week they unlock for everyone else to be able to purchase yeah. via in game or real, real currency, either way. But some of these, or one of the abilities in these characters is really obnoxious. And if you're What's going that? against her, it's really hurt. It hurts you. So, uh, Duke of Bay. Duke of Bay. But Duke of Duke Bay. Abby, something like that. I don't um, know. She is this hacker girl. And her ability is she pulls out a little tablet. She pulls down on five people and sits call. And all of a sudden, all your cell phones start to ring. Because, you know, what? covert ops are having cell phones on them at all times. They're on vibrate. So your phone starts vibrating. She can see where it's at. And then you have to actually hold five to pull out your cell phone and turn it off. 
And if you don't, it keeps vibrating and she can keep tracking you through that. That's super annoying. And while, and that, yeah, okay. and every, every single match, somebody played that operator. Yes. And I was so sick of holding the number five to <laughs> cancel the call thing out. And it's such a shame because, you know, your normal operators cost like 500, 1,000, and 1,500. I said 25,000 credits to get a season two operator that I thought was awesome. I played with her once before the new ops, and it was great. And yeah. I've been getting wrecked since because, God <laughs> damn it, this new operator. Did the operators just release, like, recently? What's uh, This so week. Why, why, yeah, it's the next uh, DLC well, season. Oh, cool. It's a continuation so the of season. it. I have the season pass, yeah. so I should, I should get that character. Yes. Oh, it, it's, nice. the, it's the final <laughs> release of season two. Nice. This I like the little movies the that they play when you unlock people in the, for the main game, like the main group of people. Yes. They have a little cutscene for them. You're like, ah, look at you. You're a cool person. And then it's over and yeah. you, you go along and play. But it's really cool. I love cutscenes. They're fun. And since the game doesn't really have a campaign, it's really cool because for those of you who don't know what he's talking about, you unlock operators to play and each one has their own ability. These mm -hmm. cutscenes he's referencing is this really cool cinematic showing you them using that ability. Like, I just had yeah. that, or um, not Thatcher, um, a dude that uses an EMP. So it showed this bad it guy. Thatcher. It is that, okay. This bad guy surrounded by all these bombs. And you see him with his finger on the trigger ready to blow. And all of a sudden, Thatcher's just over there, like, being all smug in his gestures. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. all the lights go out when he EMPs. And then you just hear a knife get pulled out. You hear a slight grunt, and then you see him wiping his blade off at the end. It's like, this is such an awesome cinematic. <laughs> Yeah, they had oh, they, nice. a real nice one. I, of I, I, I typically, um, when we're doing the cast, and I'm not quite sure on something. I usually, I usually Google something real quick. Yeah, mm -hmm. pro tip. Uh, I, I just got a bunch of pictures of Margaret Thatcher. I'm pretty sure that's who <laughs> nice. you're talking about. Yeah, exactly, so now, yeah. so now I'm just picturing the exact <laughs> same scenario, just with Margaret Thatcher, like her, yeah, her like being that's all good. smug oh, as God. she clearly is, and then like her white finger <laughs> blade off at the end. <laughs> oh my god oh. they need to redo the whole thing and change it to margaret there needs thatcher. to be a margaret thatcher helmet for him oh my god if i could play as face. if i could play as margaret thatcher over <laughs> then i I'm you would sold. hear her like it is yeah you'd hear a it british accent thatcher. like oh i got you mother like just <laughs> yeah in the back. it'd be awesome an old woman british accent <laughs> he almost went like little w wicked witch of the west kind of thing which i'm yes. all absolutely for <laughs> But how's your experience been outside of Duke B? Has the luster of the game been wearing off on you? Um, I, it's, I don't want to say wearing off because I still really want to play it, but it's no longer the only thing I want to play. See, for yeah, me, I can so. I'm, I'm doing the opposite dive. It's getting to where I'm wanting to play more of it because yeah. um, I started playing Osu. Um, which I didn't oh, put on the so list because I'm not playing it to play it. I'm playing this rhythm game that Josh talked about a few weeks ago for the fact of it gets my mouse game better. It gets me warmed up, gets me following, clicking, speed, all that mm -hmm. fun shit. And then I go into Siege, and for the first game or two, I feel noticeably better about it. <laughs> so I'm actually warming up to play Siege now. Okay, maybe yeah. I should do that. It's really good. Honestly, like if you ever want to get into a shooter and you want to do it like semi seriously, you should probably play at least Aim Booster. Aim Booster's great. Um like when I was whenever I was playing Overwatch, I I always did some Aim Booster before I went in. Um mm -hmm. you know, and then when you're done, it's like stretching. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But I'm looking forward to getting actually ranked because Eric and I have not been ranked yet because we've decided to start playing ranked at the end of the last season. And then we were, the people we were playing with were like, hey, you know, the ranks reset in like three days, right? <laughs> we're like, oh, we're not done with our placement matches yet. So we let's not fuck with that. How many, pla how many yeah. placement matches do you have to do? Ten. Uh, ten, yeah. You guys should just burn, you should have just burned through them and then just got placed yeah. and then get, yeah. is that what you did? No, that's what we're going to do. We haven't oh, done nice. it yet. Once the uh, resets is what we're going to do is make sure we burn through and we should do that tomorrow. I'm for doing that tomorrow. Did the season already start? Yeah. I oh, think. Okay. Though I have yeah. to say, since I've been playing so much Siege, my Rocket League play when I get back to it, I'm weird when it comes to Rocket League 
My jumps in skill, like whenever I feel I'm playing better, come from extended periods of not playing the game as frequently. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a common phenomenon. So like when I came back this most recent and started playing a little heavier the last couple of days, it's like, oh, fuck. Like, I, I feel yeah. better about this. And like, I'm not not champ yeah. level yet, but I'm feeling better it, about this. It yeah, kinda, it, it resets your brain because you get into patterns too much and you get into too much. Uh, it's almost like... Um, I don't want to say muscle memory. Like you get kind of on autopilot. Yeah, absolutely. And taking a break uh, kind of resets that and you're able to focus more on what you're actually doing instead of just kind of automatically doing it. Right. I've noticed the same thing taking breaks from games. Absolutely. Yeah, like I'm noticing like in the air, I'm able like positioning my car now feels more natural in the air. It doesn't feel like I'm thinking about it. It's just kind of flow. And it's like, oh, well, yeah. yeah. What's actually really helpful, too, is that you're playing Hosu. <laughs> and yeah. when you when you actually do that like you're actually seeing things faster your action time's a little faster and it really helps with rocket league too so like i typically play just to get my my brain moving and and like moving quickly you know and when mm -hmm. and when you're playing something like that it, and you go into something like rocket league which is actually quite slow um you could really see that there's a lot you really just need to get in there and and playing like these like kind of like sim like some semi brain trainers um that they'll really pick up any game that you're trying to get good at so get on osu guys <laughs> so yes good. we'll keep saying or any, if, booster. any questions about it just go talk to our boy souls he knows all yes. about that shit i can also yes. set you up with some stuff now so i have uh, i have some cool stuff some cool themes and whatnots but anyway, Adam, we kind of uh, yeah. took the siege talk and we diverged no, somewhere. Good. That's good. I like that. I like it when that happens. So what else have you uh, been up so to? Siege, uh, Little Rocket League. Got a couple of the new crates. Did not get any of the things I wanted out of those crates. I should know better by now. I'm just going to wait and save up. Okay, so I have to ask. Have you guys found that this crate's drop rate seems lower than normal? Because no, I am uh... not getting these fucking things. I've I I feel like the crate drop is the exact same as it always been. It's just I don't really care about the other crates. I don't really mm -hmm. care about this crate too. Like there's not really like when you actually like, look at it, there's only really one thing I want out of it, and that's just the new car because I like collecting all the new cars just so that mm -hmm. I can try them out. But uh, other than that, there's nothing really in the crate that I care about. Um, there's some cool rims that are okay, but they're not they're okay at best. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, in general, so, I've gotten two of these things. That's it, just two. I've gotten one, and I was given the other one by a very kind friend. Because I know yeah. I was playing with Bird, and Bird seeks this shit out. Yeah, yeah, we, you have we to, weren't, you we have weren't really getting get them. It. And that yeah, was just to, obnoxious. Yeah. It's much easier just to trade for the stuff you want. Everything's so mm -hmm. cheap, especially because this is a good crate to trade for. Because the the new car isn't getting a lot of hype behind it. No, everyone's like, ah, it's okay. It's it's not bad. It's not good. It's just it's mm. fine. It's so, back like, end new, looks terrible. Well, I mean, as far as just it's like, fine. it's fine. It doesn't look terrible. Again, I, it's just <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's just like that's that's the that's the perfect thing you want uh, when it comes to those sort of things. Uh, that car already took a huge drop. That one's down to four to five keys from its initial seven to nine. So it's already dropping. It's just plummeting. So this will probably be <clears throat> one of the most affordable crates ever. However, the the dueling dragon starting out at like fifty eight keys, sixty five to fifty eight keys as a trade. I didn't, think, I didn't even think it was that to, cool. It's up to eighty keys right now. Like it? so, really, it's just like just that alone is really the only That's thing awesome. driving that uh, that, that crate that crate at all like that's the only reason anyone's going for it. everything else equalizer one to two uh the hakari or whatever uh one to two the other two is one you know everything's like yeah. one one yeah, one 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 so it's like the only thing in here that that's worth your time is the dueling dragons 65 to 80 so really don't sweat getting a crate there's really no point in it uh well, no it wasn't i wasn't upset because of like i it was just felt weird to me that I'm used to when a crate comes out. If I play for a day, I'm getting one or two of them. Yeah, it's not it's the just, case anymore. I feel like they should at least it's do that. The they should do that. It doesn't make any sense. Like why? Good. Especially because you're going to pay money for that. You yeah. know, to open it. Well, it you're just, giving that. 
their drop like, their drop rates aren't adjusting, which is weird. What they're doing is almost like, okay, let's throw this into the mix with the rest of the crates and don't wait it. I've gotten well, more other crates yeah, than maybe, this crate since I've been playing. Maybe they do wait it, and it's just you, you know. The drop rates in general <laughs> are guarded. Like, like in Racket League especially. Like, you very rarely get anything at all. Like, you could play all day and get maybe, like, three or four drops. Um, same thing with, like, uh, like, when you actually try to get, like, a colored item out of a crate or something like that. It's really bad. You can have the double drop rate weekend where they doubled the amount of drops, so they're like the double the chance of of crates of crates getting dropped, and they usually do a double color at the same time, double chance for color. So you try to open that, and you could one not get a crate, and two not get a painted item in that same week in that same weekend, the entire weekend. Yeah, I know. So I didn't. Know, I didn't get paint. So you know for sure that it's way too little. Mm -hmm. Well, Siege is kind of the same weird. way. We can play all day and not get an alpha pack. Well, the alpha yeah. pack, so there is a good thing to that. I like every time you right. play a game, your percentage increases. And every time you win, you get a chance. Well, it's cool to see that like there's a spinner and it's and you get to see how close yeah. you were. And I don't I don't care about that. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Like, cause you get to kind of see your percentages grow right there, but for Rocket League, there's like nothing like that. It's really, it really just feels like if you're playing for drops, this is not the game for you. If you're playing <laughs> yeah. for drops, you stay in don't lobby and yeah, you drop, just tape the trigger. Oh, cool. You nice little bonus. Tape the trigger down. Yeah, just yeah. There you go. Just yeah, don't just do that. don't don't. Yeah, please trigger. please don't take that advice. You were ruining <laughs> the game if you do that. But just yeah. tape the trigger down. Yeah, but um, battlegrounds. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I actually played like two matches of Battlegrounds the other day. And the reason I played the two matches of Battlegrounds the other day is because the test server version of the game has the new map and vaulting. Things that are very highly anticipated. And I, it was really, really good. Because the test yeah. server is the 1.0 release right now, right? It is actually the full release on the test server, I believe. Something like that. Because they patch it before they release, but yeah. Yeah, because 1.0 launches um, on the 20th. Yes, it does. Nice. Yes. So really the new map, it's like very desert-y. There's other little towns. Everything's got like a Spanish name. That's uh, cool. There's like really densely populated buildings and areas, kind of like Pachinki, but higher up off the ground, more levels. Uh, all the buildings are different. Uh, there's a couple new guns. There's like a Winchester rifle, and I thought I saw like a new pistol too. Like it's a, a shotgun, shotgun, right? It's a shot. It's a sawed yeah, off and shotgun. There's, and there's a sawed off shotgun. Yeah. Didn't they already have that though? No, Not I think that's off, new. No. What am I thinking? I'm I'm in a wrong game. I'm You're thinking. In the wrong game. Yeah, I'm in the wrong that's, game. That's Team Fortress. Are you, are you in H1Z1? I don't know what I'm in, but I'm in Maybe something that's, that's not right. Yeah. But either come, way, come back. Come back. But there's one now. <laughs> yes, there is one now. Uh, yeah. But um, the biggest difference for me is the game ran really well. It's That's never good. ran this smooth for me before. Really? It, yeah. It were, was it was way smoother to play than the other the other version. Were you still what on are, lowest settings? I'm not even no, I'm not even on the lowest settings, but nice. pretty low. I wonder how much that has to do with like maybe the server being unique. It could be the server, yeah. Which I, I am know. interested in. I don't know how much of it is actual frame rate or uh, like server jitters or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, I don't know either. Honestly, it felt, good it news. Just, it just felt really smooth to play. That's it felt, awesome. It felt better to play. So how that's did really the vaulting cool. feel? Because that looks like if that feels right, that's going to make that game feel so fucking good. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not as good as like titanfall or something like you're not parkouring across the map but right it does right. It, i'll tell you what it, it strikes a good balance of if i wanted to vault i just line it up right and do it but i never felt like i was going to accidentally vault on something i didn't want to okay mm -hmm. like if you're looking at too far of an angle on the on the ledge he won't vault you'll just jump uh so you, you, gotta, know, you gotta be kind of looking right where you want to vault hit spacebar it does it Eric. 
Yeah. Eric, you know if um if you really like vaulting and jumping and doing all that stuff, have you ever played Dying Light? No. Okay, so Dying Light has a lot of that stuff in it, and they're getting a battle royale mode too. Hmm. Oh nice. Yeah, so they're gonna be they're working on putting out a battle royale mode. So you know, we'll have one for all of our games. You see, yeah. I'm just uh, really ruined because of Gears of War. Gears of War has the cover and the ability to just hi- jump over cover so fucking well. It yeah, feels uh, so Dying Light's good. nothing like that. <laughs> Absolutely nothing it's, like that. It's not going to be like that. Like it's that more like and, Mirror's Edge. Oh, but Mirror's Edge, dude. That is like Mirror's the, Edge was literally a parkour game. So yeah, good. First, first person parkour game. That game yeah. was great. Honestly, they could have gotten rid of the they could have got rid of the entire story of Mirror's Edge and just made it set pieces like here's this level, yeah. speed run it. Here's the next level, yeah. speed run it. Yeah, they should have opened open it up to like the community. Didn't they do that too? Like where there's community oh, maps and whatnot. But that they would have had to have been remember. two probably. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. remember that in the first. I know they had speed run levels for the first, but I thought those were all designed by first party. I could yeah. be wrong. I don't know. But either way, that game, that's that's a good call out. I love that game. I want to play that again. I haven't played that in a while. I wonder how well that ages. Is that really good? Uh I mean it's a it's a it's of the right well. time period. I mean, and the the art style isn't that like mid to early three sixty so clean that I think it'll really last a while. Absolutely. Well, I meant I meant mechanically hold up. Oh. Like art wise, oh, yeah, I think it'll be okay. I don't see why not. Sure it's fine. Well, because some game. Well, I'll get to that later. Uh, there's F. I'm gonna. I got a bone to pick there when it comes to that topic. But you say the yeah. vaulting. Do you think it's going to be something that really enhances the game, like everyone thinks so? Yes, because I can't. I can't even count the amount of times in the older versions where I just wanted to jump over the fence, <laughs> and that yeah. seems like such a simple thing to do, <laughs> and. It's not so simple if you don't have some sort of vaulting thing. It was always like, oh, the fence is just too high to where you have to time your jump just perfectly to get over it. And you have to be running at just the right speed. And this is just like, oh, okay. I just want to jump over this thing. Space bar. Oh, there we go. I climbed over it. It's perfect. That's great. Just just like the game should have been from the beginning. But So, you, so it gets rid of that stupid crouch jump thing that you have to master in order to be viable? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there's there is a an animation time to it, so you are vulnerable for a little bit. It's not like instant, but, which um, is good. That fits that game very yeah. well. Yeah. Risk reward. Yeah. Everything in that yep. game is balanced by that. Very much. But yeah, it's good. That uh, might other than battlegrounds. Yeah, yeah. I want to play it again. Let's play it some more. Other than battlegrounds, we did some Jackbox uh, last week for the postcast community game. Jackbox four. Yes. Yes. What did you think about it? I was about to ask you the same question, but uh, I I thought it was fun. Um, I I think I jumped out a little earlier than you guys did. Um, But we played... What what were the... I can't remember the names of the game modes. What was the first one? The first one was essentially um, Boulder Dash, where they give you a scenario, like a statement of this person was arrested for doing this on this date and you fill in a blank of what they did and they put the right answer in there and everyone else's answers in there and you're supposed to try to pick which one's the right answer and for everyone that picks your lie you get points is that the one you were talking about yeah i was just trying to think of what the name of it was yeah oh, i can't remember it all started with a p or something i don't know uh that one was pretty cool and then the uh the one that was supposed to be like everybody types in the answer to a question and then you have to type in a different question to make that answer look stupid. Yes, like that one, that one was, that was fun. Of fun. <laughs> that is probably the best game mode on that one. Yeah, that, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I didn't I didn't like the uh, whatever the one that had like the tournament bracket and all the head to heads and stuff. That one oh. I wasn't too thrilled on. I it didn't was like the mind last one that we one before I jumped off. They would give but, uh, you uh, like a question and everyone answered it, and then they would bracket mm-hmm. everyone off like, "Okay, which one's better? Which one's better? Which one's better?" Mm-hmm. But I yeah, thought the but, uh, third overall was better than the fourth. 
Yeah, that's what I was about to get to is I really liked a couple of those modes, but overall, I think the third one had better games. You really can't beat TKO and uh, Quiplash 2. Did you um, Did you guys ever play Trivia Murder Party? Trivia Murder Party? On the third uh, one. Yeah, we did that. We did that at um, our. Uh, we usually do a board game night. We had a bunch of friends over, um, and we played. I we played Trivia Murder Party for the first time. That one's awesome. That one's really good. We haven't played that before. That but, one's uh, fun. I just don't think it would stream as well as the others. Is why we kind of avoid. No, that no, one. absolutely not. You, I mean, you can have. I don't know if you can have audience members in that one. I don't know how that works. Be nice to know. see. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's fun. It's just a general trivia game. And when you get stuff wrong, you're not always eliminated. You get a chance to live. Yeah. Which is really fun. Yeah, yeah. basically, you, you're, you have to answer questions. And if you get it wrong, you die. And you're a ghost. And then when there's one person left, you guys all rush to the exit by answering trivia questions, multiple choice trivia questions. And if you are a ghost and you, and you take the lead, that person dies and then you become human. So basically the first one out wins. So it's fun. Pretty cool. It's fun. Nice. Definitely. But yeah, I, the very last game we did on four was this weird drawing game where two people drew on the same template and whichever one was voted the best lasted and it went to the next one. And whichever one was voted the best on whenever they added to it, went on to the next. It was just I don't know if it was a group of us, but the drawing went downhill fast and it all kept going that way. Yeah. (laughs) I love our community. We're a fucking hive mind and that's dangerous for that type of game. (laughs) (laughs) It's always inappropriate. It's always inappropriate. (laughs) But some good memes get born. There was someone being electrocuted with the someone standing behind them shitting on the ground. Like that was Good. stuff that was being drawn. It was like really weird. Uh, yeah, but any any game, especially any party game like that, if you get a bunch of people together and the object of the game is to draw something, unless there's a like a rule set or a category that must be drawn, there's going to be a bunch of dicks. Yeah, there'll be a dick regardless. And, yeah, <laughs> inappropriate stuff. You know, if we're talking about. Uh, Oh, what's the one? Now my mind just blanked on me. Was it charades or something? Or Pictionary? Pictionary. Pictionary. Yeah. Yeah. Where you have to draw a specific thing. Yeah. But if you just draw whatever you want, it's like, okay, we know where this is going. <laughs> Six, dicks, dicks, dick, shit, and dicks. Dicks, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> but um, this would be a good opportunity to announce this week's postcast community game if you haven't seen it in the discord already it is terraria or terraria terraria i don't know how it's pronounced i've never the known how it's pronounced uh um, yeah it's kind of like a like a 2d minecraft meets combat game platformer mm-hmm. it's got cool. a little bit of story it's to of it there's some bosses that spawn a lot it's really good yeah. game it's Loot drops. way more heavy way more heavy combat based than minecraft is yes but it's the similar principles, you know, you've got all these elements and you need to mine and then you need to get the better elements to get better gear so that you can beat the boss so that you can get more elements so that you can get better gears so you can beat the next boss. It's a lot of fun, especially if you have a group of people and you're all working together and it's, it's just, it's a good time. It's amazing how fast a game can move when you have eight people working at the same goal in it. Yes. It's like, holy fuck, we just yeah. built this yeah. mansion out of nothing. You play by yourself and it's like, oh, this is such a grind. I got to mine all this stuff and then I got to do this and then I got to, you know, build all these things and then I got to fight the boss. And then you've got eight people and you're just like, all right, you do this and then you go grab some of this and I'll stay here and build this thing. And then you get all the stuff done and you're working together and it's fun. See, the, the game has an amazing story behind it. like the actual game development itself. I love the fact that this game was abandoned essentially um, a decade mm-hmm. ago. When it was made, it came out, and all of a sudden the de- developers are like, okay, we're done. Putting it on Xbox, we're done. And then Starbound comes out. It's like, oh, okay, we're going to pick up where they left off. And the devs pretty much were like, you know what? Fuck this. They're getting a lot of people coming on board with them. Let's bring this back up. They update yeah. Terraria. They make it badass, and everyone rushes back to it. 
bam, here's a brand new free update with a whole new end game content, multiple bosses and a bunch of items and stuff. Hundreds of new items, literally <laughs> hundreds of new items. Yeah. But yeah, so come join us postcast. If you don't have it downloaded, it's like. It's a small game. You, I, you should have it downloaded in another time. 10 gigs. And yeah, um, I think it's, it's not free. Um, it's 10 bucks on Steam right now. If you get it on sale sometime, I know that doesn't help you for tonight, but I've seen this game go as low as what, like two fifty or three bucks or something. Absolutely. And also, if you don't think you have it, check your library again. Odds are you st probably do, and you just don't know it. Everyone yeah. and their fucking brother has this kind of like CS:GO. Yeah. Like I Josh, know. I think, for example, I don't. You found out you had it. Yeah, I had it. I didn't know. It's been on so many Steam sales, it's hard not to own it at this point. If you tend to buy games i guess <laughs> yeah if you fall into the steam trap yeah i have yeah. zero i have zero hours in it i've never played it i've had it for like years it looks like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's Fucking why we steam. do lost and found that's what we're here for <laughs> yeah all right uh, last game i played let's get this over with because you guys still need to talk about your games and we've been going for a while so one shot this was my 12 games of christmas uh josh got this game for me thank you josh yeah. No problem, man. And this one was interesting. This was not what I expected. So I looked at the game, and on first glance, it's like, uh, it doesn't really seem like something I'd like. I'm not big into, like, RPGs and, like, puzzle games and walking around trying to find this item so you can, you know, go past this puzzle thing, and then you go walk, walk around, talk to a bunch of people and stuff. But this game approached it a little differently in that um like woke up in this house my character doesn't know what's going on uh it's a couple of puzzles you eventually turn on the power so that you can get onto your computer and the computer says blah blah blah, blah. um this is you know whatever world and you need to explore it and then it says uh you only have one shot adam and i was like hmm i don't remember typing my name in this game anywhere at the beginning <laughs> well, that's kind of interesting <laughs> so obviously that that got pulled from like i don't know windows or something <laughs> and then later on it you you find out that uh it's like this big world inhabited by robots and the whole world got dark and uh you're basically supposedly the the messiah the chosen one or whatever and you have to bring light to the to the uh, world again so that they can you know once again thrive so i'm tasked with taking this light bulb up to the top of this tower somewhere a light bulb i'm just picturing yeah. like a 60 watt yeah. light bulb you plug into a yeah. tower and the yeah. whole world lights up yep that's it <laughs> that's, that's kind of thing. it yeah that's but it, seem, it seems like it's got a really cool story to it with a deep backstory Mm -hmm. And then part of this whole thing, um, the player character, Nico, um, he's the one, he's the chosen one. But me, the player, Adam, as addressed in the game, I am God. And I am guiding <laughs> Nico along the way. So the, the lore of the story clarifies why I am controlling Nico around. So, and Nico will actually talk to me and I can respond with chosen uh, text messages and stuff. So you're the god, Nico's the subject, but when the computer mm -hmm. is interacted with by Nico, the computer talks to you instead of Nico. Yeah. And I, I failed to clarify this before. The game is meant to be played in windowed mode. And the reason being, the first con the computer I said where it said, uh, you only have one shot, Adam, that was a pop-up. That was a Windows pop-up. I had to click OK. <laughs> so the game kind of gets in your head and in the computer. And there was a later portion where it says, hey, I noticed that you found this safe earlier with the six-digit combination, but there doesn't seem to be anything here that, that, you've, uh, that you can find that combination for. And it says, maybe you should get to looking. And it says you're not going to find it in this world. Maybe you should look elsewhere. Maybe where documents are kept. So I opened up my uh, good old Windows Explorer. I went to the My Documents folder, and guess what was there? OneShot.doc. 
It created a document in my do- my documents folder that said some stuff. It was kind of cryptic. I had some spots spots that were like blotched out, and then it said the code at the bottom. So, so cool. this game's a virus. <laughs> yeah, kind of, pretty much. Yeah, I'm just waiting on it to start rattling off my social security number and everything. It gets your fucking bank account details and yeah, yeah. But this, I mean, and it's such a small. It's such like a zero budget. One guy probably made this game. You know, the visuals are real simplistic. The music is good, but simplistic. But then there's this like supposedly really kind of deep sounding story to it. And, you know, all these interesting ways it's interacting with you. It a game like this normally wouldn't catch my attention at all. But when you add in those extra things, the document in the my documents folder addressing the player character breaking the fourth wall really interesting i have to say i liked it a lot we actually weren't going to um we typically come on like when we go and eat dinner we come on pop up and watch a little bit of the stream then we come switch into the into the game room and then continue from there but we actually stayed and watched for the entirety of the stream in the living room like it was it was kind of gripping i really liked how nico interacted with you like Mm -hmm. you really built built up this like emotional attachment to this character it was yeah it was really interesting and it was 10 times better than i thought it would be um yeah and it, it it's cool it's a it's a really it seems like it's a really good ride i'd yeah would you recommend this one to people or what do you think so far it, it would have to be to the right person um I, you know if you like weird indie games and you're not bothered by you know kind of not amazing visuals, you know, personal, it's, it's not like a side project, but you know, it's not a triple A game. It's not even a game by an indie developer that anybody knows about. It sounds like a Tom game that Tom can't play because he doesn't play on windows. Tom would probably like this game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, at least look at it. It's probably one of those games too, where you don't really want to look too much into it before you play it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I had no idea any of that was coming. I didn't know it was going to break the fourth wall. I kind of spoiled it for everybody. I'm sorry. I didn't really think about that going in. but It's okay. I, I'm going to venture out and a, say 90% pretty, uh, of people yeah. listen to us are not going to play that. I have it's okay. no idea what that is. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like a well, popular game by any means. <laughs> either way, it'd be cool. It'd be cool. Yeah. There's a lot more to it than that, too, especially yeah. just watching what you were doing. Like there's Yeah, a and I, was, I only got like an hour into it, so... That's cool. Uh, one one shot. Cool game. What have you guys been playing? Um, Well, I did the other 12 games of Christmas stream this week. Um, Tom gave me Black Mesa. Oh, Because nice. he knows that the I've Half-Life never played one Half-Life 1. <laughs> um, okay, so remember earlier in this podcast, Rewind, 15, 20 minutes, where I said I was talking mechanically if something stands up? Mm-hmm. Because I'm telling you this right now, this style of shooter does not stand up in current age. There is mechanics that they use. There is the traversing of the level that they use. It just does not stand up with the enhanced game development techniques. Wait, you don't like the climbing ladders functionality in Half-Life? No, no, it's not just that. Like it was, <laughs> It was not intuitive at all about where to go. It absolutely was oh. not like... People are like, well, you go here. I'm like, that doesn't really tell you that. I mean, this is just kind of like a meander around and find your way. That's like, oh, go to the test lab. There's three color options and none of them say anything about testing at mm. all. And um, just the puzzle solving in it was really obtuse. It just felt, it's very fucking dated in the yeah. way that it plays. Um, newer shooters feel much better with that. And but Half-Life is, it's a shooter, but I think it's more about the story than it is about yeah, the Yeah, th- that's fine. It feels a lot more like an RPG than it does a shooter, really. Well, I mean, there's, you don't have skills and levels and stuff. It's just a well, shooter I mean, with thought, a good story. Yeah, right. I mean, like Halo, I love Halo's story, but it's still a shooter. And it's just the way you interact with that world does not feel right. The way you have to solve that. the problems is just weird. Um, mm-hmm. It just didn't feel like they had this platforming section in it. And it was like circa 2000 kind of 3D platforming. I'm like, 
Game devs have figured out long ago, this is a bad game design. You should not do this kind of platforming in shooters. But it's there. Right. Half-Life did come out in what, 1990? Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm just saying. I, I'm not saying that this, well, it's in this game. It's a remake of that game. No, so it's not a direct remake, I've been told. I've been told it's, uh, the beginning is directly off of Half-Life, but after that, it's their interpretation of the game. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, this, uh, this one I've actually spe- seen uh, speed run a lot. It's a really interesting Ooh. game. Um, especially because, like, how the puzzles are solved uh, in the speed running, <laughs> like, as a speed run, is way different. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but Eric, um, sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, like, I, I'm in, I would be interested to play through it normally and see what it's like. It seems, it seems like it could be pretty convoluted. Mm hmm. So this is, you've talked about the frustrating mechanics and the puzzles and the datedness, but this is a story game. This is that the primary focus of the game is a story. So what, what do you think about that from what you've played of it? Um, okay. I'm going to say this right now. If you say the primary source of the game is a story, that, that it can't be. When you're struggling that much and you have to put that much time into other things outside of the story... I mean, the gameplay takes away from the story in that aspect, but the premise is really kind of cool. Uh, so far from what I saw is like they essentially they're doing some high radiation experiments. Shit goes wrong and people are transforming into monsters. For lack of a better term, even though it, there's some Lovely. form of alien shit going on. <laughs> okay. But it's. I'm intrigued. It's bad because I want to play Half-Life 2. I've heard that age, aged much better. And plus, it's more recent. I mean, that was 10 years ago. Half-Life 2, I believe. Um, so, I, mean, I am. I would like to get through this so that I know the story so I can jump into Half-Life 2. I actually never played Half or uh, Black Mesa or any of the previous Half-Lives. I only played Half-Life 2. And I enjoyed it. And I caught on the story just fine. So don't be worried if you don't like it. It's a lot like the Witcher uh, series is what it sounds like. Um, like mm. Whitney was really big into the Witcher series and she played the first one and uh, and she didn't like it. <laughs> She's like, nah, I'm not going to yeah. play this one. So Most she jumped right. Had that problem. Tom had so, that problem. Yeah, so she jumped right into two, played through two. Everything was fine. Played through three, yep. loved three. It's fine. So this, this seems like the same thing because, I mean, Half-Life 2 was fine. It was a good game. It was worth, mm-hmm. it was, it's worth your time. Well, and that came out in a time where people started to really have an understanding on how to make first-person shooters. I mean, that was in the same era of Halo 3. I mean, at the, in Modern Warfare 4. I mean, that's when the genre really hit where it's at today was in that yeah. era of shooters. Well, I think yeah, it, it, you know, anytime you play a game that is an old game that you don't have any nostalgia attached to, right? you know, you have to kind of... <laughs> You have to contextualize it a little bit, you know? Absolutely. You have to be a little bit more willing to put up with stuff that kind of sucks because games were just like that back then. But you see, and, I, I'm willing to even cut down nostalgia, though. Like, go back and play GoldenEye. That game's a steaming pile of shit. We did not <laughs> yeah. know how to make shooters back then, and it shows. Yeah. Yeah, but like what Adam's saying is put yourself in that time period, you know, and play like if you're going to play Turok, you know, think about like, okay, this is Turok at this time period. You know, this is this is the kind of game that was happening at that time period. If you want to or just don't play old games, that's what it comes (laughs) down to for me. If the game isn't good, I'm not going to play it. I'm not saying old games aren't good. There's games on 64. I still think hold up very well. Mm -hmm. It's just Mm -hmm. this game did not age. And that's, that, that's pretty much where I stand on. It's just, I know there's yeah, a lot of fanboys out there that hate me saying that, but it doesn't age well. You're <laughs> soaked in nostalgia. Go back and play it and tell me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. So you're not going to keep playing it then? It, the, I guess what I'm asking is, it, does the little bit of story and intrigue from that story outweigh having to put up with playing the game itself? No. Okay. It took 10 minutes to get to be able to play the game because I had to ride a fucking tram through a goddamn yeah. science center. <laughs> that was obnoxious. And there was no real story to it outside of the fact you're realizing, oh, this dude has super deep clearance and he's late. 
No wonder he's like, fucking tram takes a half hour to get him to his goddamn office. It's building suspense, Eric. Suspense my ass. And then you don't even have the fucking physics right. When I jump on the tram, I move because they didn't lock me to the goddamn tram to inherit the fucking velocity. Anyway, so, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm glad you got that out of your system. Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. There, there it was. Like you let that, it sounded like you let that <laughs> stew for a little while. God, yeah. that game sucks. Didn't, okay, I'm good now. That. <laughs> got that out there Did anyway you anything that was good um oh, I guess that's it, check it? rocket league about that. check so well, yeah. at least you had that to outweigh it yeah. yes, and sure. i had my be- my best shot on my life in rocket league too so yeah was, was tom was tom watching you play that no but he watched the vod so he never brought it back up to me because he probably realized oh he didn't like that <laughs> I, wonder, I wondered if he would like give you a lot of shit for not liking it or like try to argue his point or I was just curious how that. Would I'll go. let him try to argue it, and we'll I'll just see. tell him, "Dude, take off your fucking <laughs> rose tinted glasses and play it again." <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. I'm not going to rip it anymore because I understand what it set up is a great thing, so I won't touch that again. I'm not going to rip it anymore. <laughs> Josh, um, yes. you have actually played something that I tried to play today. Yeah, and you should have kept going because we we actually played it fine. After you left, like well, I couldn't go. That's the thing. I couldn't <laughs> get in. Okay, so we were, we played Fortnite fifty versus fifty. It was awesome. I played it last night too. I didn't just play it um, today. I played it last night. Uh, that's a blast. It's super fun. It's super unbalanced, and it's a mess, and it's a blast. Like basically, mm-hmm. what happens is is exactly what it says. It's fifty players versus fifty players, mm-hmm. and you all drop randomly. You don't get to see who you're dropping with. And then when you land, you know, um, little green arrows pop up over everyone's head. That's a good. And then if they don't have arrows, they're not good. Kill them. Um, (laughs) It's pretty straightforward, right? Um, What ends up happening is uh, they also show up on your map once you get within range of them. So you don't see everyone on the map. You know, you kind of have to navigate around and figure out where they're at and then like start grouping up. But then everyone starts grouping up into like bigger and bigger piles of people. And, and then it, it hilarity ensues. It's ridiculous. Like nice. Like giant people, like giant squads of people like rushing like other giant squads of people or like mm-hmm. towers being built. Like the, the towers and structures that get built are absolutely insane. Um <laughs> they turn dusty into a giant like mega complex when we did it. Nice. Everyone sniping from the top. It was really cool. So so it actually fundamentally changes how it plays. It's not just one of those. Oh, yeah. like, oh well everybody still just kind of does their own thing anyway oh no everyone groups up everyone and you can help you can help up people that aren't in your pod aren't in your party Mm -hmm. so like if if someone's over like you know gets down you could run over and like help them up even though they're not oh yeah group um do like the old battlefield thing you just have a medic run around yeah that would be nice (laughs) what was that it was cool i was actually just going to bring that up this makes me think of mag they just had like a (laughs) gun didn't they Did yeah you shoot at somebody it like sprays them like a spritzer <laughs> and they <get> revived. <laughs> that's awesome i love I that friends game. that were really high ranked like man. all right here, here's some medical for breeze there you go now all those bullet wounds are here are healed <laughs> 128 <laughs> v 128 maps oh my yeah. god it was so awesome on the playstation 3 yes <laughs> that was revolutionary kind of and then it died what was shitty is some stores were selling that after they took the servers down for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's because uh, that's an online only game. Online it's like, online, oh, no campaign. Such a douche uh, move. What's really cool uh, in 50 versus 50 is when, like, at some point it starts getting lopsided and one team has more, like, way more players than the other team and it starts getting smaller and smaller. So then at some point there's like 30 people trying to hunt down six guys. And it's ridiculous. You just see like everyone like zerging <laughs> around the circle. Like like at some points you see everyone like kind of billowing out around because you, you have them all marked now. So you see them on the yeah. map they're, yeah. and they're all like trying to close in around these guys. <laughs> and it's just like, it's really cool. Like we were running through like the woods and then everyone was spread out. It was like a hunting party. Like send the hounds. You know, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. When you were saying that makes all, me think it's like, like hey, we, we're going rabbit hunting. So what we do, we fan out. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what's happening. It, I'm it's sure, cool. I'm sure most people can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, all everyone on this uh, that's hey, listening. There is people in our chat that can relate to that. 
There I know is, of at least two guys in that chat that can. <laughs> there is peoples. There is the people. <laughs> there are people of my type in that there chat. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, it's good. It's it's a it's a really uh, really fun mode. If you haven't checked it out, absolutely check it out. It's a blast. I actually want to get into a little bit of that tomorrow. Um, yeah, we should. It's they good. were having server issues today. I wasn't able to actually show us online, so I wasn't able to play. <laughs> it was yeah, obnoxious. it was still a little finicky when so, we did it. So tomorrow we'll play some Fortnite, and then uh, Josh, you and RS can join me and Eric to play some Siege. Yeah, yeah let's do it. That sounds and maybe B- Bivens if he's around. He played with me and uh, those other guys. Uh, was it last night or the night before? But um, I think it was a little bit much for him. <laughs> Yeah, I think it. Because I think it was a like, little much for me, <laughs> and those guys yeah. were all joking around and like being really good at the game. Well, I feel like it's someone like, like telling us, you know, instructing us and stuff. So, yeah, it's like it's someone that just started re- Rocket League, yeah, jumping in, playing in a ranked game with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and it, having really good people with you, it depends on what they're doing. Like today, I was asking Toasty questions. He was pointing stuff out to me, and it's like, awesome. Yeah, oh yeah. Other times when you're oh, in yeah. there and you guys are just fucking around, having a good time, they'll pull out pistols and shotguns and only use that and just yeah. run around and terrorize yeah. the map. Joking <laughs> and, you know, talking about the memes, all that stuff, like Hello. kids do these days. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, we should play that some more. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I only played one other game, really. Does GTA Five? Um, it's a little weird for me. GTA Five. It's a good game, but like, it's only good with friends for me. Mm. What I end up doing every single time is getting in. Everyone says they want to play. Get in. Start like getting ready to play. I end up just buying a bunch of clothes or or buying a car. <laughs> and, then, and then whoever was supposed to join us on the heist doesn't show up. Yeah. Then we just sort of leave. Hey, let's watch a movie on <laughs> that Netflix. Sucks. Yeah. Actually, let's just scroll through all of the movies on Netflix for an hour and then Dude, decide not to watch anything. I hate yeah, that. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what it's like. For uh, let's see if there's game. something better. Uh, let's see if there's something better. It's yeah, two it's hours like you're later. Trying find, uh, you're trying to find the perfect movie to watch. Like, what's that one movie that everybody is just raved about how great it is, but I've never seen it? But it's on Netflix. Yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. It's, you just need that's to watch something. That's exactly what I do in GTA. I just go in. Not, not sure what I'm going to do, and then I just leave. <laughs> yep. See, to me, GTA has always been a solo player game. So yeah, like, I've always just played single player and played the campaign. Oh, and I guess I'm the older ones, around. yeah. And I will go back for hours and play that. Like, I, after it's all said and done, I'll just drive the fuck around, run some people over, and see how long I can avoid cops. And I get yeah. way too much amusement out of that. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really fun with friends. GTA with friends is the best GTA I've ever played. Like, by yourself is great. Um, with couch co-op, it's great. Like, you know, you die and you swap. You know, that, that mode's great. <laughs> like, that mode, that playing like that is yeah, fun. But yeah, we got really it. playing with friends online is hands down the best GTA. And now, thanks to someone, I finally have it. Thanks for the gift. Um, so yeah. I'll probably have to get that installed and give that a shot. And by yeah, dude, shot, I mean actually start to play because it's not a shot. Everyone knows that game's fucking good. So it's oh, it's a good time. Seventy well, gigs of it. Never uninstall it. By the way, anyone listening, never uninstall GTA. We go back to that as a postcast game pretty regularly. People in the Discord play it. Even if there's a drought of us not playing it for a while, it's such a pain in the ass to play or to uninstall that just just don't uninstall it. <laughs> Absolutely not. And uh, with that, I think that's pretty much all the direct games that we've been playing to talk about. Unless yes, anyone sir. had anything else they forgot about. Anything nope. at all. Nope. Any shitty mobile games you play in your downtime. Mm, nope. Sorry, I always refer to mobile games as shitty. I don't particularly do that. In that case, we got a little bit of news we'll touch on before we get out of here. News. Uh, couple headline stuff. Uh, Valve has decided that they will no longer accept Bitcoin as payment options because, holy shit, Bitcoin is everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Soul Calibur 6 has been announced. That I'm actually That's kind of excited cool. about. 
I'm so excited about that. I, I used to play the crap out of Soul Calibur. It's, it's probably my it's it's second or third on me for fighting games. I don't know if I like it more than Mortal Kombat or not. But that that's where it sits. Like Tekken is clearly one, and then it's Mortal Kombat or Soul Calibur. I've always liked Soul Calibur a lot. I hope they fun. have that mode that um you can create your character and then go like and you have this create a character like path of like the warrior, you know? Like, oh, in, give in him some skills. of the other ones they had they yeah, like and like you just play through and like there's all these different fights and matchups and you can kinda go like it was that was my favorite little mode in Soul Calibur. Um it's just it was super fun. Sometimes they, they dynasty war, warriors it up and they say like, Oh no, you don't get to have that mode anymore even though you really liked it. <laughs> Tur- Turok added something like that in five. I can't remember if it was in the later games. I didn't like it in I said Turok, holy shit, Tekken. I didn't like yeah. it in that as much. Yeah, Turok, make your own dinosaur hunter. <laughs> that sounds great. No, like in in uh in in Dynasty Warriors is a really cool mode where you, you you guys have played Dynasty Warriors right or at least know what Dynasty yeah. Warriors oh, yeah. is played. Oh yeah. So it's it's a classic, right? Uh, you literally play it's murder, a, literally murder everybody simulator. Yeah, like everyone's just basically <laughs> fodder for your amazing god tier yeah. warrior. Yeah. They had a really cool mode where you could be the fodder. You could, you start out as that little guy. And oh. you and you have to like run through and like hide from like the crazy guys to start with. And just try to accomplish each task, and then you got stronger and stronger and stronger. Got cool armor, and you became the big guy. By the time you finished, it was really good. And then yeah, they yeah. took it out, which made no. me sad. <laughs> that's Lame. really weird. Cause that seems like that could have been a really cool mode where they could have actually expanded on that in later iterations. Yeah, and they didn't. It Absolutely. made me really sad. As well as microtransactions, litter that if you want. Yeah, I know. Swipe your credit card, boys. It's time to play Destiny Warriors. <laughs> Destiny Warriors. <laughs> Destiny Warriors. Oh That's God! Good. Speaking of Destiny, should we? Should yes. We that a little bit. That's a good segue. Yes. So, um, <laughs> Destiny's new DLC has dropped, and there's been some fun stuff coming up with that. Um, there's been reports that they have officially they have locked original content behind the DLC wall now. Uh, some of the game modes or some of the things in the game are now unavailable unless you have the DLC. I can't think of a worse way, like a worse PR move than that. Yeah. I know. People people are already mad about other games and their microtransactions and locking stuff behind the paywall of loot boxes. What should we do? Oh, yeah, let's take something that they already have in the game and take <laughs> it away and then tell them that they have to pay for it to get it back. Oh, what? You're, you're upset because you didn't pay $20 on a $60 game that came out 30 mu- or 30 or three months ago? Oh, no, fuck right. you. We're still locking it. Oh, my God. I just can't even imagine what was going through their heads doing that. Like, they can't. The internet's going to notice. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. So I, just wish is... Tom, I just wish Tom was here for this cast to rant about this because that would have yeah. been a good That would have been a good one. That would have been very interesting. Maybe a little something like yeah. eh, going on, but. <laughs> yeah, so, um, sorry about that. There was one cool thing they did, though. Um, and the only, only good thing Bungie did this whole week. Uh, they had an issue with one of their guns that was a super, super um, random um, drop. Hard to get, but they broke it, and they made it super strong. Well, all of a sudden, people in PvP are raping everyone with it. I mean, they're just destroying everyone with this gun. So Bungie's solution, they knew they couldn't fix the gun in time, so they made the gun purchasable in app or in game with currency. So now everyone has this gun running around wrecking everyone. Oh wow. So their solution for the short term of we can't fix this quick enough. So hey, everyone, go kill everyone with that gun. So I guess it made That's the TV awesome. I guess it made the you PvP mode gun. laser tag. And you get an overpowered gun. <laughs> and you get an overpowered gun. <laughs> Yeah, so that was um, the only good PR move they did. So, <laughs> I mean, it sounds bad that they did a fuck up and they made fun of it. And that's the only good thing they've done so far. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I'm sure they'll, they'll course correct. It's Bungie. I have faith that they will make it right eventually. It's just kind of saddening that they 
did it wrong like this on the second iteration of the game. I'm starting to wonder if everybody that worked for Bungie when Halos were being developed have left and been replaced by a bunch of people that used to work at EA. Yes, <laughs> maybe. Because <laughs> Bungie was a fun-loving company. Yeah. Like, even at Halo, he didn't like Halo. They did a funny little community shit, and they were all about the fun. There was... They had map packs that went down in price as they got older, the way shit's supposed mm. to happen. But sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, other stuff that happened, uh, the Game Awards happened. Game Awards. Yay. Game so awards. When I say the Game Awards, that's actually the Game Award is called the Game Awards. They wanted yes. to sound like they were the official. The, the only Game Awards. But yeah, so they had their go out of it and... Um, Actually, I was a little shocked. Zelda pretty much took everything it was in. Just about. And Horizon didn't get a fucking thing in this one. Ugh. Which really tough, bummed me out because I'm like, that. They've got some good competition, though, to be fair. Yeah, but honestly, and, I think it's a better game than Zelda. Yeah. I'd like to... like I, When I was looking through this initially, I saw that there was a bunch of uh, games that I really wanted to play that I never actually got around to. Mm -hmm. And I re and it makes me really, really, really want to play uh, Nier. Yeah. Well, it's, I got to finish that. In, it's good to keep in mind with these game awards, though. It's much like the Grammys and the music awards. It's like, it's not necessarily what was the best. Right. The, the, they got to pick a, a winner. huge deal is... You know, made popularity, it. hype, that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so no, yeah. Maybe maybe Horizon Zero Dawn is objectively, well, you can't say objectively, but maybe it's, you know, a better game than Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is The Legend of Zelda. And yeah. that was a huge title. It was right. a title for the Switch, a new console that's doing pretty well, too. It's pretty natural that something like that would win a lot of categories, even if it wasn't necessarily the best in that category, depending on how you want to judge it. I mean, some of the categories are a little weird, too. Like, most anticipated game, like, how do you really mm -hmm. judge yeah. that? But, I mean, they just picked, like, some popular ones that everyone yeah. is probably anticipating. Last of Us, Red Dead Redemption, Monster Hunter World, yeah. God of War, Marvel, Spider-Man. Uh, should we go over some of these? Well, there was, there was one thing I wanted to bring up, which made me almost want to discredit this entire thing. Like, how in the fuck are you doing this? <laughs> um, right. for I'm trying to get the actual name of the category so I don't misspeak here but uh, f there was a category of essentially best indie game and they didn't even mm. have Hollow Knight nominated Ooh. Hollow Knight is getting huge love yeah. everywhere and it's not even nominated yeah so it's like come on yeah best independent game doesn't even have Hollow Knight on it Granted, Cuphead won, mm -hmm. which I have no issue with Cuphead winning, but it's like, yeah, that was... how do you leave that off? <laughs> so, so uh, let me just. I mean, it was it was lists. it was um, nominated for best debut indie game, by the way. Yeah. Yes, but not best indie game of the year. Oh, okay, I can see that. Which is what gets me is like, how are you there but not here? Obviously, they know you mm -hmm. exist, right? But yeah, yeah, that's weird. Uh, game of the year: The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Um, runner ups Super Mario Odyssey, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Persona 5, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, best game direction. Uh, any guesses? Oh, yeah. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Now, that <laughs> I can get behind because they made a huge change in the game, which was yeah. great. So, I, I'm yes. all for that. Honorable mentions to Wolfenstein 2, Resident Evil 7, which I think was a good one for that. Yes, big uh, change in Super direction Mario for that Odyssey, series. And again, Horizon Zero Dawn. Best narrative was What Remains of Edith Finch. I have not played this. I have not really heard much about it, but... I don't know shit about it. I'm play it now just because of this. <laughs> uh, Runner-ups near Hellblade, Wolfenstein, Horizon. Best art direction, Cuphead. Hands down. Mm -hmm. I really can't argue with this one. Yeah, that... Yeah, it's pretty amazing. The amount what, of care that what, went into yeah, that. What, yeah, that's just, it's insane. I was, I was watching a GDC talk on one of the animators, and he actually went over exactly the process of animating everything and drawing it out and mm -hmm. sending it to the next guy. It was, it's really, really interesting. Yeah, that's, that's not easy to do for a game. Fully hand-drawn, Jake, no. Well, it was amazing <laughs> because I was going into Horizon like, oh, this game's gorgeous, it's going to be the best. And then mm -hmm. I saw Cuphead, and I'm like, okay, different scale, 
but oh my god, yeah. this is so fucking good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, he, I mean, he went and talked about like the idle animation for one of the bosses ended up being like, you know, you start with three drawings and then you draw a bunch of stuff in between those three drawings and you end up like just the idle animation for one of the bosses was like 30 drawings. Yeah, 30, yeah, that's, like, like, that's exactly how it works. So you, you, it's called blocking. When you do your first, uh, first pass, you mm -hmm. block in your, your, um, th there's two ways of doing animation. There's straight ahead and there's mm -hmm. pose to pose. Uh, this was, this sounds like, which is more traditional to do a pose to pose. So they block in their keyframes. So their big mm -hmm. movements, they block in. And mm -hmm. then you have someone come in between and they do an in between on that. And then someone comes in after that and does polish, so they'll come in and and refine some movements, or maybe they'll uh, they'll add more frames here or there. But that's how you get your initial timing and spacing is based off of your your first blocking phase, and it's it's involved, man. That's not a that's a no joke way to do it. Fully hand drawn. Um, yeah, I'm sure they they like they did a little stuff after. I, I mean, I don't I can't imagine they did everything, especially mm -hmm. this day and age, a hundred percent. Uh, without a little bit of editing here and there, but right, yeah, no, that was amazing. They did an amazing job. So definitely well deserved, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. So if you're interested in what some of those categories were and what happened, go check it out. But essentially, it comes down to Zelda one shit, Cuphead one shit, Hellblade one shit. I didn't even know anything about Hellblade at all. Like I've never, even, not even heard of it. I'm intrigued by it. I remember and, looking at it when it came out, and I'm yeah. like, this looks weird. Yeah, and after watching a video, after seeing these awards, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I kind of want to play that. <laughs> you know what's crazy is is the, is the Persona 5 showing up so often. Like, the Persona mm -hmm. series shows mm -hmm. up all over the place. They always wins awards. It always does well. Like, Persona 4 did really well. Um, but, like, I really want to try these kind of games it looks like kind of my kind of game but at the same time i don't want to go all the way back to one like yeah. if someone out there that's played a persona series can tell me it's okay to just don't play through persona 5 and be okay oh yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't go through from one you don't have the time to go through from yeah. one <laughs> yeah, these are so huge big. jrpgs they take yeah, for I fucking know. ever i wanted to know podcasts, that's I'll why i was like can someone give me like the cliff notes? Can I watch a speed run of it? Like, what can I yeah. do? <laughs> a guy from Giant Bomb was took him like two hundred hours. He's put into that. Damn, like That's crazy. fuck. So before we get off the game awards, best score in music went to Near Automata, and I want to say if you haven't heard that yet, listen to it because it's really good. If you like, you know, game soundtracks or movie scores and stuff like that, listen to it. It's it's really really good. I, I need to Excellent. finish that game. Really need to. <laughs> yeah. A um, couple more uh, quick hits. Uh, Josh will be happy about Bayonetta 3. Oh, yeah. Super amped. A little bummed about the fact that it's an exclusive again. Yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like I have to buy a Switch or something. Yeah. Kind so, of um, oh, damn. You it's have also, to get though, an awesome console. It's also a good excuse to buy a Switch. Yeah, that's 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 how yeah, it works. You buy a Switch, <laughs> and you're like, well, damn, now I have to get The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey. Well, what's damn. really cool about <laughs> the fact that Bayonetta is coming to the Switch, they're also remaking the first one and two for the Switch. Yes, that's oh, really? really cool. So okay. that's really cool. Like, I'm playing through the first one right now, most of the way through. It's a blast. It's actually probably one of the most fun games I've played, period. Mm -hmm. It's so fun it's just super campy fun. i love it's that. super campy but it's like just genuinely fun if anyone's never played bayonetta and has it and can afford it on steam which is probably like a couple bucks <laughs> do it it's a blast it's really good so i i, I might actually in, invest in a switch after christmas you will not be disappointed my friend love that <laughs> um Another news from the Game Awards, Death Stranding released a new trailer. And I'm Ugh. sticking to my guns. Kojima is off his fucking rocker. <laughs> this guy is nuts, and this game is bordering on possibly insane. Yeah. It, it looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most straightforward way of me putting it. Like, stupid? I yeah, I mean, I watched the... It looked all right, but like 
like the whole like animation and how it was and i wasn't super impressed with the animation of the other one uh, of the other trailer either but mm-hmm. this one's animation was even worse than the first one like there's a scene where he where it, it's just a short thing so i'm just i'm not going to worry about spoiling it because it's a mm-hmm. trailer it's a trailer <laughs> there's yeah. a scene where he has a where he has a baby on his chest like there's this guy and he's like there's two people and there's the main character and then there's these two people and like he's trying to save this guy and that guy dies or whatever and so this guy has a baby on his chest and he's like and they're clearly the three of them are trying to protect this baby like that's what it looks like mm-hmm. and he's like he like unhooks the baby because he's about to die right unhooks this baby from his chest and then just like says looks at the other guy kind of scared like like here and he just drops it like just <laughs> straight into the puddle <laughs> just drops it right in the puddle and the worst thing that happens after that is the other guy just like kind of stares at it for a bit it doesn't do anything, and then uh, and there's no urgency. Yeah, and like you're like, all right, well, I guess we're moving. And he, like slowly bends down, picks it up, and he's like looking around, just checking stuff out in like this death puddle, and mm-hmm. there's nothing going on. And I'm just like, it just seems so bland. It, like this is a mo- this is a motion capture game. Yeah, it's it's like everything's done. It's clear that everything is done through motion capture, and I hate that. When you do oh, stuff really? like that, it comes off. It comes off really fake and really bad. Like you need to hire your animators to come through and actually animate this stuff by hand, because mm. when you mo- when you do mocap for a game and you try to like make a robot do it, everything comes out like a robot and it looks terrible. Yeah, I'm so, sure there's. I'm sure there's got to be some you know motion capture initial and then tweak it. Like the I last mean, of us was motion capture and it was it actually looked really good. But they had cleanup animators. Like that's what you do. Yeah, that's, even, what, yeah, it, that's what I mean. Yeah, even in even in uh NBA two K seventeen, sixteen, I had friends that were doing the cleanup animation for that. Mm. It's really lame work. It's not super exciting as an animator, but that's it, so cool, it's yeah. what makes it's what makes the, the game look good and feel good and have weight. Uh otherwise you just get like this really floaty Miyazaki feel and mm. it's just or like Pinocchio uh the um the fairy the fairy witch yeah. or the fairy that comes in that's mm-hmm. all that's all uh like rotoscope stuff so okay. it looks really floaty and airy and it just doesn't feel right they need to stop well fuck well, the feel i just they, think the uh, game's going to be incomprehensible i think it's the Kojima per- game it's going to be probably pretty convoluted in the story it's going to be very strange and weird and complicated and with no one holding him back it's going to be incomprehensible potentially I, maybe, <laughs> maybe but I, that can still be cool you never know i mean I, i'm not gonna put a nail in a coffin i'm just saying i'm sticking to my guns that konami is the only reason he was making good games otherwise his games would be fucking batshit insane <laughs> I mean, I his games play, were batshit insane. I just <laughs> want to play another batshit insane game. I, I just want to see it because it's it's so weird right now. I just want to mm. know what it is now. Yeah, the intrigue <laughs> factor is definitely there. I'll give you that. Yeah, very high on the intrigue factor. Uh, Valve is actually coming up with a new game. Um, it's a bridge Neat. construction game. And to look at it from what I've seen, it makes me think kind of like Lemmings. Um, Lemmings? Like with some portals and stuff. It's really, really interested. Um, like, it looks like you're making a bridge to get things across, and you can have the bridge going down to hit a portal to launch up to something else, and just really interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued to like, see it. It looks it's like a, a mobile of, game. It's a mashup of two different games, right? It's kind of a mashup of Portal and then some other game that was like Bridge Constructor or something. A poly bridge? Poly so, bridge. It, so it looks to me like it's it's... Yeah, it's Portal and Polybridge, which I don't like. It, it seems like a real like okay. So everyone's really excited about Valve things and Valve putting out games. Usually in this mm-hmm. situation, it's like really Valve. Like that's what you're gonna give us. Like we've been waiting for so many games, and we want yeah. like like it looks like, like they're putting out a project. Re- like <laughs> yeah, it's like like Chet from Accounting wanted to make a game real quick. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like yeah, we have a couple Shit. developers that haven't quit, and we don't have any story guys, so because they all quit. So like, Chet, just use like these guys and yeah. and use whatever assets we have. It's just yeah, like, it's, it's we we have billions bad. laying behind you, so just pay some people to make this. <laughs> There's a game called Bridge Constructor, and it's literally a mashup of Bridge Constructor and Portal. 
Like that's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Like a partnership or something. Then that <laughs> then maybe it's just bridge uh, constructor expansion? Is that what's happening? I, I don't know. We'll have to look. We'll, we'll see more when it comes out later. It's, it's a mashup. It's it's Valve. I have faith in if they're releasing a game, it's going to be fun. decent. But I I'd kind of would rather just get a Portal Three. Yeah, they don't. They don't like the number three. I know. I've heard. Number threes will never happen. <laughs> well, now they don't like games in general. They just don't like <laughs> yeah. Like they, we all know they're just they're just a you know a, where we buy buy. They don't like making games. games. They just like slinging games. They yeah. like getting thirty percent cut off of every game sale on their platform. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I didn't know. But um, <laughs> other other quick news we'll get through real quick. Uh, Battlefront two through a lot of the bitching that's happened they've decided we'll speed up progression by increasing credits through single player so they've upped your daily limits we'll see oh man they 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 burnt so many fucking bridges they've like they're trying to throw rope across right now they're not even trying to rebuild the bridge yet they're just trying to throw the rope across (laughs) (laughs) we'll burn that bridge when we get to it (laughs) yeah uh, Mega Man X 1 through 8 coming to PC, PS4, Switch, you know, and Xbox yes. One. That's, um, that's awesome. I I never actually got into the old Mega Man games, but I did get into the Mega Man X games. So I'm really looking forward to playing these again. I'm not a Mega Man guy. I've never really played a lot of them. I, I picked them up, played some, and put them back down. I, I played X, X4, X5, and maybe X6, I think, were the ones I played. And those are the only ones I've played. They were they were a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably touch, especially if it's on the Switch. I mean, god damn it. Yeah, that's the Switch is meant for games like that. It's so good. Exactly, indies and small <laughs> things. Um, I enjoyed Mega Man's, especially. I, I think Mega Man X is the one I played the most. Just the first one hmm. out of all of the Mega Man's. Oh, I think really? that's I the one I played I the most. I, I don't know if I played that one. I don't think I have. Yep. I don't know if I put more than an hour in a single Mega Man game. <laughs> but That's with that fair. said the last bit of news we're going to get at today Mega Man 11 is announced to come out next year cool so there will be a new Mega Man it's going to be interesting to see how that does because that is an old style fucking game yeah well older the, the art style bothers me a lot when I was watching that trailer really it's got that weird too polished looking 3D but like like those scenes in Futurama where you're watching a cartoon and then all of a sudden it's like the 3D ship flying off and it looks kind of stupid. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of that almost. Or um, where it or does like the, 2.5D. The art style of like the thumbnail for Clash of Clans and all those shitty mobile games. Like that okay. cartoony but 3D generated. Right, right. Kind of, the, kind of the uncanny valley aspect of it. It just, I, I don't know. It really put me off. So I don't mind that. It's just this style of game is, I mean, it's 90s. And I'm wondering if kids today would be interested in this or if it's just going to be people who know Mega Man and like Mega Man that are interested in this. Yeah, probably just people that like like Mega Man. Still, though. So that's, that's going to be interesting for that. Um, though, that's all we got for the news. So that said, I think we'll uh, do the rundown real quick. Yeah. Um, so for those of you guys watching tonight, you could always go over to our YouTube channel and check out all the podcasts you've ever missed, as well as other content we have up there. There's actually a recent Dark Souls video thrown up there. Y'all should go check out. That's right. We still said the word Dark Souls this cast. Tom's not here. We got him covered. <laughs> Hey, that um, one is probably the best edited Dark Souls yeah. video or video that we've ever had. Yeah, that's a really good video. Shout out to uh, White Grizzly for editing that for us. He's a he's a monster. Yeah, it, it's amazing. You really should just check it out. Just beca- just for Grizzly at the very least. Not even just for us. Just for his editing. Like, man, that content sucks a lot, but the editing was great. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's what we need to hear. <laughs> And then if you're already over there watching that video and stumbled upon this you, or this cl- uh, video, you should come to our Twitch live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and come chill with us during the show. Watch it live. Be in the chat. Have a good time. Um, yeah. if, if you got some suggestions, some questions, you think we suck, whatever, tweet at us at at 72PC Podcast. If you don't know where any of our stuff is, 
All you need to remember is 72pinconnector.com, and you can be linked to anything that we have anywhere, including RSS feeds. But if you just want to listen to our voices because you think we have ugly heads, go to you store or the Play Store, go to the iTunes Store, wherever you want to get your podcast, and you can get our podcast from there. And with that, I think we have a couple shout-outs for tonight. Yeah, we do. Uh, Summertime Nate has followed. Thank you for following. And Eve Epoch has subscribed. We love Epoch. We know him. We love you, man. Thank you. Got the 72 love. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Dave, so much. And with that, fellas, that's all we got. Stick around, jump in the Discord. We will be doing um, Terraria, hosting a server for that. Jump in the Discord. The details for the server will be in the Discord. So, that said, until next week. Game on. See ya. Bye.